getting ready to throw in this uh, speed sensor. I got this speed sensor kit for my power steering. I made up this little bracket. I had some leftover tabs. I think I was using these for my custom brake lines that I cut on my plasma table. So I just took one, grinded the rust off, just put a coat of uh, chassis paint on there, and this is good to go. Electrical power assist unit will be speed sensitive, so I can adjust and tune it so at low speeds, it increases the assist, and at high speeds, it decreases the assist to give me more road feel. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dan Dulac and I am building a V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible. This is episode number 30. If you missed any of the previous 29 episodes, be sure to go back into my channel and check those out. There's been a lot going on with this build. On today's episode, I'm gonna go back to the rear in the engine compartment. As I'm waiting for my ECUs to come back from the tuner, which I still haven't gotten yet, and the drive shafts, the custom rear drive shaft axles, while I'm waiting for those, I decided to go back and look at my intake track. I couldn't leave well enough alone and I'm gonna modify the intake system yet again. I'm gonna simplify it a little bit, remove some of the silicone hoses, which will remove a lot more clamps. It'll look a lot cleaner. And I'm gonna to go to a true three and a half inch diameter for the entire intake track from throttle body all the way to the NACA duct. That's gonna require some customization of the cylindrical air boxes that I have. I've got a wide nose from three inch to three and a half. I also have to find or build or make some three and a half inch NACA ducts. I haven't been able to find any online, so I decided I'll just make myself a pair of NACA ducts with three and a half inch uh, inlet. That in and of itself has been a journey. I thought I would go ahead and design a NACA duct, 3D print a template or plug that I can then lay up some fiberglass or carbon fiber. But then one of my viewers, one of you actually recommended I take a look at a relatively new 3D printer filament that's carbon fiber infused nylon. And I actually did a bunch of research. I purchased some, I've been printing with it, and this stuff is amazing. This is the actual end result. I actually built a three and a half inch NACA myself. So I'm gonna show you how I did that, how I designed it, really pretty straightforward. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Let me explain to you what I'm gonna do. So first of all, the throttle body here is three and a half inches diameter, and then kind of this accordion tube. I've got three and a half inch, the math housing is located in this aluminum tube. Then I've got this silicone elbow that goes from three and a half down to three. So in this elbow, it transitions to three. And then the air filter canister is three inches on both sides. And then I've got this three inch, 120 degree elbow that goes to a three inch NACA duct. And what I'm thinking of doing is converting this to three and a half inches, both in and out. This canister, this carbon air filter canister, I've just picked those up on eBay. So what I think I'm gonna do is take these apart, upgrade them with proper k &N air filters, and while I'm at it, I will increase the diameter of both the in and output to three and a half inches so that this is three and a half all the way through to this point. All right, I thought about just leaving this three inch NACA duct as is. I think the air velocity here at the NACA duct would be enough to compensate for the smaller inlet diameter, but ultimately I decided against it. I figured, what the heck, we might as well do this right and decided to make my own three and a half inch NACA duct so that from throttle body all the way out to the end of this NACA duct where high velocity air will be entering, it's three and a half inch through and through, and that should help maximize airflow and air velocity into this system. Let's take one of these apart so I can show you what uh, this is all about. All right, here's one of these air filter canisters, canisters here on the bench. In fact, I've already taken one of these apart. This is what the filter looks like. I actually put a flashlight through this. This is a very porous filter, so that's why I'm gonna upgrade. It probably flows pretty well, but I want a little bit better filtering action other than this cheap paper filter. So I found a pair of k &N filters that will, I'll be able to replace this and reuse this plastic end 
So these caps, these end caps, what I'm gonna do is simply machine off the three inch adapter fitting there and widen it to a, a three and a half. So I've already done that with one side. So it used to look like this, now it looks like this. So I simply machined that all off. So this is a three and a half inch opening. And I just have a piece of stainless three and a half inch tube. It's all I had on hand, but it's 065 wall just like the aluminum tube I'm waiting for. What I'll do is simply bond this plastic piece to the piece of aluminum tube using some JB Weld or some epoxy, multi-purpose epoxy bond. Bond this together nice, and then that will give me a three and a half inch inlet. And for this piece, I think what I can do is heat up this glue. I just glued to this plastic. Uh, cap, heat up this glue and try to pull this apart, machine out the glue from the inside, machine off this lip and uh, make a three and a half inch hole just like I did for this piece. And then I can simply again just bond or glue in a small section of three and a half inch aluminum tube and that will be the output side as well. And then the beauty with the Canon filters, I'll never have to replace them. They'll be easily serviceable uh, because this canister comes apart with just some little self-tapping screws. Little self-tapping screws holds this canister together and it all comes apart pretty, pretty easily. And this is just thin carbon skin. So effectively, I'm gonna just remake the input output with new filters. Let's keep going on taking these apart. By the way, I tried to, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to heat this up because it'll just melt the ABS plastic. So I think I'll just have to cut, cut this out the best I can with some shears and then I'll just machine out the glue there. It's gonna make a mess, I'm sure, but gotta do what you gotta do. So let's get to it.
took one of these little filters apart and man, I'm glad I'm changing these out to some proper K&N filters. Look at this paper. It's just like, it's, it's weird. It's, it's some fabric, but it doesn't look like the filter properties are that great. Plus it looks like it get dirty real easy, real fast, being it's just single ply. Glad I'm changing this out for a proper K&N filter because that is, as I expected, being an eBay item, cheap. Uh, so really all I'll be reusing is the carbon canister and then the end caps. Everything else will be custom inside once I get those things done. So I found a better K&N air filter. It actually has some air filtering on the top. I guess they call this the extreme model for maximum airflow. This is three and a half inches in diameter which is perfect because it sits and will clamp on to my new three and a half inch inlet perfectly. So that's one side. Now, one of the things I had to do because this is a little bit taller than the, the original air filter and then the other K&N, it's about an inch taller, actually had to extend the cap a little bit by about another inch. So when this goes together, you can see now I've got some an extra some extra space in there for some additional airflow. So I 3D printed this cap out of carbon fiber infused nylon. This is going to work out just great. I got a, printed a three and a half inch flange on there, and that's where I'll connect the other end of the hose towards the intake. So this is what the whole unit will look like uh, once it's finished up. I am waiting from K&N. They only had one of these filters in stock. The other one's back ordered, so I'm waiting on that one before I can finish up these canisters, but came out great. Three and a half inlet, three and a half outlet, and those will bolt right up to the car and uh, we'll be in good shape. All right, let me flip over to Fusion 360, my 3D CAD program here, and show you how I designed this NACA duct. Not going to get into too many details here, but effectively you start with a profile. Here we're looking at a 2D profile of the inner shape of the NACA duct and then the outer flange, the mating flange that I'll use to attach to the body. So that's kind of the, the bottom profile. The side profile is what you see here. So this is the general side profile of the shape I'm looking to create for the NACA. And then the last 2D image here is the three and a half inch inlet. You can see that's just a simple circle there. So I'm gonna use a pretty cool feature on this application called the loft. And this loft allows you to basically set up uh, some profiles that you wanna model and use for the loft, as well as the rails. So I'm gonna use the bottom profile here, as you can see highlighted. I wanna use the inlet or the circle as a profile and immediately it tries to create a mesh between the two. Now the shape here isn't quite right. Uh, the bottom shape is fine, but when we look at the side profile here, here you can see it's not quite right. So I need to use some guide rails. So that's pretty easy. We'll simply select the uh, side profile as, as the uh, guide rails uh, front side and then on the heel the back side and then now we've got the shape the general shape that we're looking for here and that becomes the basis for the NACA duct then we convert this loft to an actual so 3d solid image here so you can see the primary end of the NACA duct and then I start to add in the coupler that's a three and a half inch coupler and we just start to st stitch this together with the parametric modeling piece by piece. We'll add the flange. Now the mating flange is added. And then here we will add the integrated debris screen that's integrated directly into the inlet flange. This will keep, you know, leaves and rocks and stuff that may get in there. Any larger pieces that I don't want to get into the air filter. So I'll model that up and that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the design. And then I simply export this into a 3MF object file extension. And I can import this into my 3D printer slicer software, send it to the printer and away we go. All right, here's a quick time-lapse of the print, which took about 17 hours on my Prusa i3 Mark III 
printer. And again, I'm using this carbon fiber infused nylon, which has a temperature rating about 380 degrees Fahrenheit before it starts to distort and melt a little bit. So given where this will sit in the engine bay, that should be reasonable. Here are the finished Nacaducks. Came out pretty, pretty nice. I'm pleased with these. I still haven't got the printer settings quite right. The finish is pretty smooth on the outside, uh, but on the inside, it left some of these little, these little nubs. But I'll sand those off. And my plan is to actually gel coat these. So first of all, I'm gonna bond these to the body. So these will become part of the body, the rear clam. And then what I'll do is I'll epoxy these on the inside and then I'll do some black gel coat on the inside so that it matches the body perfectly. And then what I'll do is I'll just gel coat the seam in the body, mold it in there perfect so it looks like it's molded as part of the, originally as part of the body. Similar to on the RS model. If you've seen pictures of the rear clam on the RS, you can see there's some small little NACA ducts on the rear end. So I'm gonna do something very similar. I'm gonna integrate these into the body so it looks factory, like it came out of the mold like that. I actually took a test piece to see if the epoxy would bond well. So I just took these, are, this is one of the ones I printed in two pieces. The flange I printed separate from the knack itself, then glued it together. And this was an early model. But anyway, I tested to make sure that the epoxy would bond to this carbon infused nylon and it does, it bonds very well. So when I end up putting some epoxy and then some gel, black gel coat on here, that will further strengthen this piece. I'll bond this to the body, but then I'll do a couple layers of fiberglass layup just to integrate it directly in to the rear clam. Here's the original carbon fiber NACA duct. And as you can see, the footprint is pretty close, identical. The only difference is, is the intake now goes from three to three and a half. And then the other thing I did is the angle here is 30 degrees versus the, this is more like 45 on the original carbon NACA duct. So I went a little bit less aggressive of, a, of an exit angle on the new printed NACA. Uh, that'll give me some more securing options. So I still haven't figured out how I'm going to uh, attach the hose from the canister to the NACA once this is on the body. I'm gonna have to come up with some type of, of system there. In fact, I may end up 3D printing a different flange here, curved or something that will, as I'm moving the clam up and down, um, this will seat directly into it. So I'll figure that out once I get the body on, but um, pretty happy with how these came out. So let's get these prepped, sanded, let's get some epoxy, and then we'll get some gel coat on these and get them ready to be installed in the rear clamp. the first coat of epoxy base coat on here and the stuff I use is right here it's tinted black and it's really meant to lay up and or cover anything you want to wrap in carbon fiber or fiberglass you put that base coat on first it gives you a nice base and it bonds real well to the underlying substrate so I use that and then once it gets tacky I'll just put on some regular epoxy resin coating here put another layer 
Let it dry, sand it with some 1500 grit, get it really smooth, and then we'll put on some black gel coat. Another thing you may have noticed, I used a little bit of flame on this, uh, and it helps get really tiny air bubbles out. And uh, just a quick blast of heat, and it will help create a much smoother finish on that. So that's a little tip I learned. The other reason I'm coating these is this carbon fiber nylon is sensitive to ultraviolet rays. So that's another reason for, for covering this with epoxy and ultimately the uh, gel coat is to just protect these parts from the sun. They'll be completely entombed and encased in fiberglass and ultimately gel coat on the top side here. So that should be enough to protect these things and they'll live a long, happy life on this car. And once that's done, I'll set these aside until I'm ready to mount them up to the rear clam. And uh, we'll get them glassed into the rear clam once and for all. So there's one more modification I need to make to this intake track. And since I removed this reducer, three and a half to three inch elbow, I decided I'm gonna remove this elbow altogether. Just get rid of the silicone and I'm going to make a new MAF sensor housing. I considered just extending this housing, just welding on a 45 degree piece at the end. But rather than that, I think what I'll do is use some of this. This is 45 degree mandrel bent aluminum tubing that ultimately will be my new MAF sensor housing. And that will replace the 45 degree silicone tube. Then what I'll do is weld on these MAF sensor adapters. I found these at a local company actually just up the road from me, MRP Performance. You can buy basically these MAF sensor flanges for almost any car. So I found these and again, I will simply weld these on here to the underside, just like these original housings I had. So those will get welded on and then this tube will not only be the MAF sensor housing, but also the extended elbow. I've got to cut it short here, make room for the canister, and then that will just clean up get rid of the silicone hoses, then I'll just have a small silicone coupler right here as I attach it to the air filter canister. So that is the plan, that should clean this up a lot, and then I will again, I'll get these wrinkle coated to match the intake plenum, similar to what I did on this shorter piece over here. This will be all wrinkle coated. So, very good, let's get to it. I've got my new intake tubes cut down to size and off camera I slotted out the tube. I get this all prepped for this MAF flange that I'm gonna weld on here. And same on the other side. This is all prepped, ready to go. We'll weld this on and uh, then I'll send these off to the powder coater to get some wrinkle coat and those will be done. Okay, these are all welded up, ready to go. Not too bad. Aluminum welding's a little, a little tough to be had, but I can see a few dimes in there, we'll take it. And again, these will mostly be hidden underneath. They're also gonna get coated, so it'll, it's gonna cover up the weld bead. These MAF sensors simply go in like this. 
couple of M3 screws in there and that's all she wrote. Getting ready to throw in this uh, speed sensor. So we're gonna mount this up in the car. I've got some new hardware. And on the car, I'll show you where I'm gonna mount this. So there's, there's a hole already in the upright, right there, ready to go, an M8 hole. I'm gonna use that hole to mount the speed sensor and the pickup is gonna be right on the head of these bolts on the two-piece brake rotors. So those, those nuts and bolts hold the rotor hat in place and I'm gonna use the ends of the bolts as the target point for the speed sensor. And then this electrical power assist unit will be speed sensitive. So let's get this speed sensor installed and get that part done. All right, the speed sensor is on. Got it all bolted in, wired in place. It's supposed to be set with one to two millimeters from the target. There you can see the clearance and I measured it with a, a pair of depth gauges and it is at 1.3. So that will work. And then I've just got the wire run up along the brake line and then into the cabin. So sweet, so that'll be that and we're on to the next thing. Mm -hmm.